you can instantiate it. All right. What and making an object from it. So what would be an instruction that would do that typically? What would it look like? Yeah, I, I, think, I think you're on the right track. Um, to instantiate an object would be this. My class, C equals new my class. We call the constructor. So you declare a variable of this type. You say new. And you call one of the constructors. Assuming that has a no argument constructor, we'll try to run it. And uh, if my class is an abstract class, that will not work. So that's what we mean by we can't instantiate it. We can't make an instance of it. We can't make a class. What's the use of an abstract class, though? Can't make them. What, what use are they? Okay, uh, that's, de that's definitely on the right track. Uh, the reason you can create it is because you can use it as a superclass. Uh, the example I gave is when uh, it is, is a pet in a veterinarian's office. There are certain things that are true of all pets. All right, uh, they have a name, they have a birth date, whatever. You can calculate their age if you know today's date and the birth date. But no one just has a pet. That's sort of a, an abstract category of things, or an abstract class of things. People have dogs and cats and rabbits and so on. So I can't simply take my pet to the vet and say, I have a pet. They want to know specifically what kind of pet is. So in our case, we could make pet a superclass for something. Maybe a superclass for dog. Cat, rabbit, and so on. So we can put stuff in that pet class. What kind of stuff can we put? We can put all the stuff that you can put in a regular class. All right? So we could put attributes. We could say, well, pets have names. So I'm going to create a string attribute that has a name. Pet has a birthday. And so on down the line. We can also create methods. Calculate birthday or calculate age. That would take the birthday, take today's date, and figure out how old it was and say it's so many years, so many months, or whatever. So we can write functions on an abstract class. We can create constructors on abstract class, despite which I, what I misspoke last time briefly till I corrected myself. Uh, we could have attributes on an abstract class, but we could have one other thing. And that other thing was what was mentioned, and that is we could have abstract methods. So we can put an abstract method in an abstract class. An abstract method is simply a way of saying that everyone that inherits this will have their own version of this function. So. get food. Well, there's a specific list of foods that a dog would eat. There's a specific foods that cats eat, specific foods that rabbits eat. If you had spiders and snakes and all those things, it'd be specific foods that each one of them eat. This is an abstract class because I can't say what a typical pet eats. You know, if this, imagine that get food returns a string that says all the things that the pet likes to eat. Well, what does a generic pet like to eat? 
we can't say that. You have to know what specific pet you're talking about. Are you talking about a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a spider, um, a, a snake, you know, a fish, or whatever? Then you can say that. So an abstract method is a method that is written on an abstract class. All right? Has to be written on an abstract class, or later we'll find an, an interface, but has to be on an abstract class. And everything that inherits from it has to either have a concrete method for the abstract method, or has to itself be an abstract class. So by the time you get down to actual classes that you can instantiate, there better be a method for every abstract method that's defined in the superclass. So for example, get food could be implemented on the rabbit class to return carrots, lettuce, and straw. On the cat class, it could be implemented to say, I don't know, fish, turkey, whatever. And on the dog side, it would return whatever dogs eat. On the lizard side, it would say mealworms or whatever. Yes? Yeah. So we, we, didn't, we didn't deal with pets in, in our example. We dealt with faculty members. And we said that we came up with rules of how faculty members get paid. I hope I still have it here. I do. So we have an abstract class for faculty is abstract. Therefore, we cannot say faculty F equals new faculty. All right, because faculty is an abstract class. Our two concrete classes which implement the abstract class are full-time faculty and adjunct faculty or part-time. We have a number of attributes that exist for faculty. We have an ID number, we have a name, we have a department. We have the credit hours they teach. Right? Those are attributes that all faculty members possess. So we can put them in that abstract class of faculty, because an abstract class can have attributes. We have a constructor to set those. I didn't bother writing the get and sets just because it would take time. But we would also have the gets and sets. Um, but again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to put those on there. All right. I also have an abstract class that says calc month or an abstract method that says calc monthly pay. It's abstract because for a generic faculty there is no formula. There is no default formula that this is how faculty's monthly salary is calculated. There's no such thing as a generic faculty member and this is how their salaries are calculated for the month. There are part-time and adjuncts, all right? And we said that part-time or full-time faculty, in addition to this, they have a monthly, or they have a rank, rather, which can be one, two, or three. And the rank determines what their salary is. Their regular monthly salary, if they're rank one, they get 3,000 a month. If they're ranked two, they get 3,500. If they're ranked three, they get 4,000. And then for every credit hours over 15, they get paid, if they're rank one, 600, two, 700, three, 800. Adjunct faculty. They just get paid whatever their credit hours 
times uh, or divided or, or times the rate. And they're considered uh, at faculty rank one's rate. And this overpay, overload pay is divided by four. So they get paid one-fourth of that because that's the rate for the whole semester and would do a similar division by four for full-time faculty. All right, so last time we created the faculty class. Today we're going to create the... Um, the, the full-time and part-time faculty class. And we'll write some tests about it. Our tests last time were pretty easy, right? Because we really can't test our, oops, we really can't test our abstract class because we can't say this. All right. If we try to say that, we're going to get an error. Again, just to prove that to you, in case you doubt, let me go to that folder. It'll tell us that no uncertain terms, I can't do that because faculty is abstract. So we really can't test this by itself. So I'm going to make the full-time rank first. And I'm going to make it, and remember, we have to code the, the differences. All right? How do you code the differences? Well, what are the new things that we have to put in this faculty class, the, the full-time faculty class? There are, if my calculations are right, three things that we have to put in here. We have to put the attribute for rank, right? Because that was not on the faculty abstract class. There was no rank in there. Because not all faculty members have a rank, all right? Uh, adjuncts don't have a rank. So I have to put in an attribute for that. I have to put in a constructor for full-time faculty, which is probably going to chain to this constructor. All right. I would normally put the gets and sets in, but like I said, we're skipping that. All right. That doesn't mean that you should skip it on your assignments. I'm just telling you in the interest of time, I'm skipping it. And then finally, we need to implement this method. We have to have a concrete implementation of this method because the abstract class, class said that we have this. So I'm going to create the full-time faculty class. So I'm going to say new. And I'm going to save it as a Java class. I'll tell it full-time faculty. All right. So we're going to have public class. This is not abstract, right? Well, right, because there are really full-time faculty in the world. So I can say full-time faculty F equals new full-time faculty. I can even say faculty F equals new full-time faculty. Remember, it's the new part that actually creates the object of the certain type. All right. So public class, full-time faculty. What's next? Exactly. Extends faculty. I'm 
Remember, as soon as I put the brace in, I'm going to put the end brace in. So I'm going to have an attribute that's protected int rank. Let's see, what did I call it in here? I called it level. So I'll call it level instead of rank. I'm going to create a constructor. And I'm going to create a constructor that has five arguments. What are the five arguments that my constructor is going to have? How many arguments are in the constructor to faculty? So where's the fifth one? The one that we declared there. So it's going to have all of the arguments that are in faculty, its constructor, plus it is going to have a argument for level. What should the first line of this constructor be? Should it be pretty good? Should it be adequate? Should it be average? It should be super. Thank you. <laughs> So the first argument for this is going to be super. What does super do? Right, not, not really inherit, but it's going to call the constructor on the super class. Oh, I, I was actually, no, I, I was right. Never mind. So I'm going to call the super class, and I'm going to give it the four arguments that it needs. All right? If I didn't have this line, what would happen? What, uh, yes, and what would the error say? If I don't, oh, go ahead. If you don't have, if you don't make a call to a super, it's still going to call a constructor on the super class. Which constructor is it going to call if I don't explicitly say which one? The default one, which is what? No arguments. Now, my super class doesn't have a no argument constructor. And therefore, it would complain if I didn't call super, it would try to call the no argument constructor on the super class. There is no no argument constructor on the super class, and therefore it would get an error. So I'm going to use this to set the other attributes, and I'm just going to say level equals arg level. Now, I'm going to put in here. public double I got to get the name just right public double calc monthly pay and this is not going to be an abstract class or it's not going to be an abstract method because this is a concrete class so we have to clear up all those abstract methods because we can actually make these. So there has to be code for all the methods that could be called. So what did we say our salary is? I'm going to create a variable for salary. 
actually I'm going to create two variables, or three, a double for regular, a double for overload, and a double for total. Okay, if level equals one, then regular equals three thousand and my overload rate is what? Well, it's going to be the rate for I should be using these constants, base level 1 over level 1. Boom, two, three, two, two, three, three. Finally, if credit hours or greater than 15, overload equals overload rate times credit hours minus 15. Finally, initialize all these to zero because otherwise the compiler can't tell that these got initialized and will give us a problem. And I'm going to say total equals overload times Overload rate. No, overload plus. What I call that? Regular. Where here? No, sorry. Yeah, I should have a semi call after after that. I'm not angry today. Just a typo. And then we return the total. All right. So now I can test this. I'm going to say as a tier one person, 
who was earning was taking teaching 12 credit hours. So what should their calculation be? Well, their regular pay is $3,000. They're not working over 15 credit hours, so their regular pay, their, their total pay should be $3,000. Let's see if that's right. That's a function, so I'll include it, the quotes. And the one thing I forgot, too, is this is times 0.25. Because remember, the semester lasts four months, and the $600 per credit hour is a semester value, not a monthly value. All right. So let's go and try compiling this. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. All right, so now I try to compile it. And I just missed a parenthesis. monthly pay. Oh, I forgot to, yeah, full time. And overload might not be initialized. I thought I said overload equals zero, maybe not. I didn't say overload equals zero. Variable regular might not be, okay. Ah, yeah, equals zero. There we go. All right, and we can run it. And it'll tell me that they made $3,000. Yay. Okay, let's give, them six, let's give them 16 credit hours. So now they should get their $3,000 plus they should get, they're working one extra credit hour, so they should get $600 for the semester, but since we're dividing that by four, four months per semester, they should get an additional $150, so it should be $3,150. What test cases should we do to make sure this guy is right? Okay. Okay. Um, we should do, really, all the ranks for getting overload and also for not getting overload, right? So. We should have a rank one that gets overload, a rank one that doesn't get overload, a rank two that gets overload, a rank two that doesn't get overload, a rank three that gets 
uh, overload a rank three that doesn't get overload. We might even want to put a few tests right at 15 to make sure that that cutoff is, works correctly. Uh, that's perpetually a problem in computer science, the old plus or minus one problem. Should this be greater than or greater than or equal to? Am I starting numbering with one or zero? If I'm counting, do I add one to this or do I start at zero? All those things are a problem. So you would minimally have, I would say, six tests there to test each of these to make sure that it works right. All right? So that would be the test plan. Test person one, that is level one and works and doesn't get any overload. All right. So you could create all six of those in your unit test. I could have boop, six of those instances, six of these just repeated one after another with F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Then I could keep them in there because if I go and change something, I want to make sure it still works. All right? Even if I don't think it had anything to do with it. All right? I'm one of those people that you want to be absolutely certain. So you do this, what's called regression testing. So make sure the new thing that you fix doesn't break something old that used to work. All right? Now I'm going to do, uh, notice by the way, it says faculty F equals new full-time faculty. This is an abstract class. I can do that. I can declare a variable holding a pointer to an abstract class. That's legal. I just can't do the new part of actually creating an object of a type that corresponds to an abstract class. So I can't do that. I can do this. Why can I do this? Well, because a full-time faculty member is not an abstract class. It's a concrete class. And oh yeah, by the way, it's also a faculty member. It inherits from the faculty class. So therefore, I can use it and put it in a pointer that points to faculty. Now, by doing it this way, I'm going to get the version of the function that's declared on full-time faculty. But I'm limited to the functions that exist on f. So if there was a get and set of rank, I wouldn't be able to call it on F, because all F knows is that it's a regular faculty class. Let me do a couple of things that we talked about just to demonstrate um, that I wasn't lying here. I get rid of the super line. What we said would happen is we'll get an error. And we'll get an error because it's going to be looking for the default or no argument constructor on faculty. All right. It doesn't actually say I'm looking for the no argument uh, constructor, but it says constructor cannot be applied to the given types, blah, 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 blah. int string, int string, let's see, I think I eliminated the wrong line. No, I didn't. That's just how it's telling you the error message. It's telling you that the only constructor on faculty is this. And I am calling the no argument constructor, therefore the no argument constructor doesn't match that. So that's my error. Oh, found no argument. Right there, it's calling the constructor with no arguments. So I have to, before I do this, I have to call super. Because if I don't, it's going to call the no argument constructor, and that no argument constructor doesn't exist on the, in the faculty class. What if I don't have a method called get monthly pay? It was declared as an abstract method here. Given that this is not an abstract method, I have to have a method called calculate monthly pay. If I don't, this is going to happen. It tells me fa full-time faculty is not abstract, and it does not override the abstract method for calc monthly pay in faculty. All right? So again, a class either needs to be abstract or there has to be a 
version, a concrete version of this function declared, either in it or in a superclass immediately above. And there wasn't. So therefore it gave me an error. If I put that back in, I'm good to go. All right. Now, I'm going to copy this for adjunct faculty, even though I'm going to change it quite a bit. Adjunct faculties, first of all, don't have ranks, so I can get rid of that. Public class adjunct faculty extends faculty. Public adjunct I don't have a level again, so I don't call that. I do still call the super, all right, and I pass it the four arguments that I have. The calculation is a lot easier. It's simply going to be 25% of the rate times the credit hours. Again, notice the considerable code difference. All we're doing is we're coding the differences. So we have a constructor and we have the one method that we have to override. We have to override because it's an abstract method in this guy's superclass. All right, let me go in and we'll save this. adjunct faculty. I'm going to change the unit test to create a new adjunct faculty. And I'll ask for the monthly pay for Mike who works 12 credit hours, so it will be 12 times 600. That will give me 7,200, so I'll get a fourth of it, so I should get I don't have the overload rate. I didn't define that for adjunct. For adjunct, actually, we know that the overload rate that they always get is over level one. So I can just plug that in. The fact that those are capitalized is nice. It, may, it tells me there's something different about those variables, namely that they're a constant. All right, 1,831.50, so that's correct. All right, now there might be other, other methods that exist either in the faculty class uh, or the full-time faculty or the adjunct faculty. But that is the uh, case with um, abstract classes and abstract methods. And the public static finals we talked about before, those are the constants that we declared that can be called anywhere within um, 
can be referenced anywhere within. It's nice that the, uh, the, the variable name is capitalized because, again, at a glance, you can see what's a constant and what is possibly coming from elsewhere. Questions about any of this? All right. So your assignment. Let's look at it for a couple minutes anyhow. I was going to start talking about interfaces, but nah, we'll, we'll wait. Oh, how many test cases for adjunct faculty should we have? We really don't need many, right? Because their calculation is simple. Their calculation doesn't have if statements in it. All right? And again, this is a case of knowing the code helps us formulate our test cases. When we look at the code for the full-time faculty, we know we have to ca uh, handle all three of those cases of rank one, two, and three. We also know that we have to handle less than 15 hours, more than 15 hours. In this case, Really, one test for an adjunct should be theoretically enough, but I'd probably do another couple tests just to make sure. So I'd probably do at least a couple tests. Just because on a fluke, that function could just simply say, well, we're just going to pay every adjunct $1,800 per month. All right? And we'd happen to hit the right value, and it would look like it worked. Whereas if we ran it for two of them and it worked, then we probably really are on to something here. So for your assignment, you're going to identify test cases, and you're going to identify a class diagram. This is the one that's due next week, if I'm not mistaken. Next week is also the midterm, all right? And I believe, let me look. Midterm will be online. I'll give you details about it being posted online um, next week. There won't be a new lab assigned next week. I probably will put out a lab, but it won't be like due the following week. It'll be like due two weeks later. That way, if you get the midterm done, you can start looking at it. All right. The midterm, I aim not to make it difficult. I aim to ask a lot of concept questions. Like, for example, a good question would be something like, why do we make our attributes uh, private or protected? You know, that's something that, yeah, maybe you memorize, just make it private and protected, but maybe you don't know why. So I want to make sure that you know the whys and aren't just repeating the steps because all that. But so the midterm will be next week. Um, your assignment that's due next week. involves the library materials, books, new release books, DVDs, new release DVDs, and patrons. All books have these things. All DVDs have these things. And all patrons have these things. There should be inheritance in this, there should be um, at least something abstract in this, all right? So your design should account for that. If you've designed everything and you don't have inheritance, or you've designed everything and you don't have abstract, you might have missed something. So go back and think about it and, and uh, um, revise it, all right? Um, this is due October 11th, which is actually tomorrow. Today. That's today. OK. Uh, again, if it takes you a couple days, that's, if it takes you a little bit of time over, that's fine. All right, my mistake. What was I thinking? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, turn it in as uh, the class diagram as a PDF and a JPEG. And then give me the list of test cases. 
An example test case would be a person checks out a book and returns it on time. Did it give them a, fa did it give them a fine? If it did, then you got a problem. It shouldn't give them a fine. Uh, and there's discussion about what a test case should look like, where you describe what you're going to do, you know what the result should be, and did you achieve that result or, or yes. It should be a checklist. And you're, ideally, you're going to keep that test plan, because if you make changes to any of these things, you're going to go back and retest it. You might revise some of the test cases, revise some of their outcomes. If, for example, they increase the fine to a dollar a day or something like that, but you're going to go and make whatever appropriate changes are, retest it, and, and there you go. Next week, uh, we will spend time reviewing. Um, I'll answer any questions. Our next big topic after this are interfaces. And interfaces, not graphical interfaces, but they're almost like a sort of class. But they're not really a class. They're an interface. Interfaces answer the question, how do we get around not being able to have multiple inheritance in Java? We'll talk about why multiple inheritance is a problem. We'll talk about how interface at least solves part of that problem. All right, that's all I had. We'll see you up in lab.